As we reported earlier, President Trump departed today for a lengthy trip to Asia. At the top of the agenda, will be coordinating pressure against North Korea. The regime of Kim Jong-un has made significant advances in its nuclear and missile programs. The core message of the president's trip, we will not allow North Korea to have the capability to launch a nuclear-tipped missile that can hit the United States. So how does North Korea view its weapons programs and the Trump administration's approach? We turn to former North Korean diplomat Tae Yong Ho. He was once North Korea's deputy chief of mission in London. He defected last year and now lives in South Korea. Mr. Tae, thank you very much for joining us. You were telling us that you led a pretty privileged life as a diplomat uh, working for the North Korean government. Why did you defect? Oh, it's a little bit uh, complex reasons of my uh, defection. First of all, uh, I did not agree with the uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, desperate race of nuclear and ISPAM programs, which can uh, finally make North Korea totally destroyed. And secondly, uh, because of my uh, future of my sons, I thought that as a father, the best legacy I should leave for my son uh, is to let them free. Is it? Is your, we know this is a regime that takes defectors very seriously. Are you and your family safe? Oh, at this moment, I am not quite sure whether uh, my family members or relatives are safe. Uh, I have one the sister. The ones who are still in North Korea. Yes, I, I have one sister and a brother in North Korea. And uh, for propaganda work, last uh, April, North Korea invited CNN team to have interview with my uh, brother and my sister. And in that interview, they cursed me a lot. But at that time, I was really happy to see their faces again because I didn't imagine that I could see them again in my life after my defection. So as someone who worked in the diplomatic field for the North Korean government for through many years, what can you tell us about the mindset of Kim Jong-un? Oh, Kim Jong-un uh, is not a madman. Uh, uh, he is an uh, intelligent uh, guy, but with a merciless mind. So the past five years of his rule in North Korea proved uh, that uh, he want to uh, destroy anything on his way, uh, no matter whether it is a country or a human being. He has persecuted hundreds of senior leaders in North Korea in his five years term, including his family members like his uncle his and own, his half-brother. His own half-brother. What, 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 what do you understand to be his view of the United States. We've seen his nuclear buildup, the missile buildup. What is your sense of what he thinks he can accomplish when it comes to the United States? Oh, he has a kind of illusion that if he acquires these nuclear weapons and ICBM, uh, he could be able to compel Washington to pull U.S. troops out of South Korea and once uh, U.S. troops uh, leave South Korea, then foreign investments would follow U.S. troops out of South Korea. And if that is the case, then the South Korean business also would leave. Then it, it can, he can stabilize the whole South Korean system with his nuclear weapons. But, uh, but we haven't seen that happen, of course. And what we are seeing is this administration, the Trump administration, pursuing a very aggressive policy toward the North. What do you see as the effects of that on the North? I think uh, the uh, Kim Jong-un uh, has been very desperate to develop uh, its ICBM and nuclear, and he even uh, sent uh, a lot of rhetorics, warnings, and provocations of uh, nuclear tests and IBM tests. But I think uh, we should admit that uh, some uh, rhetorics by uh, President Trump and the unpredictable character of the President Trump actually worked to some extent to uh, stop uh, 
his desperate escalation of this conflict. For instance, when Kim Jong-un warned the possible uh, test around Guam, the American territory, then the President Trump responded with fire and fury. That and comment, that, right. Yes, and that kind of a very strong response by President Trump actually uh, uh, stopped Kim Jong-un to uh, have a test around Guam. That's why he changed his direction of ICBM from Guam to Pacific Ocean over the uh, Japanese territory. So you're saying to some extent it's had a positive effect uh, yes, on the North. Yes, I believe it's so. And, and we know now from reporting that there are those in the Trump administration who have put forward the notion of a the possibility of a limited strike, an attack against the North in order to punish the North and to keep it from developing its nuclear and missile program in the belief that that could be effective. How do you think the North would respond? I think even, even a limited uh, a strike, like a kind of, you know, surgical strike by U.S. can uh, bring a full scale of uh, the conflict or war on Korean Peninsula because all North Korean military uh, have been trained to fire back anyway uh, if uh, one of their or even very small part of North Korea uh, is attacked by the U.S. And given the fact that uh, more than 10 million of a South Korean population are living within 100 range of tens of thousands of North Korean artilleries and missiles. I think if, not, if that kind of immediate and automatic response from North Korean military uh, can create huge human, you know, loss on South Korean side, and if that's the case, then I think America and South Korean forces may retaliate in full scale. Yeah. Then that's why you know that it will easily escalate into a full-scale war on Korean Peninsula, which would mean huge human sacrifice. Huge, uh, almost unthinkable. You've you've also talked to us, um, Mr. Tay, about uh, what you think would be effective. Uh, it's it's you're saying some of the tough talk from President Trump has been effective, but you you've also said that there should be a, a, a better effort to communicate with the North, to reach out to the North. What do you mean by that? I think we should engage in even try a dialogue with Kim Jong-un. And also we should engage uh, to break the isolation of North Korean people. I think uh, we can disseminate uh, the more outside information to educate North Korean people so that we can help North Korean people to make a change Fascinating, uh, fascinating to see where this is going to lead. Uh, Tae Yong Ho, we thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you very much for this opportunity.